Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another BioLane video log. And uh, I know it's been a while. I guess I always say that before a video log. It's been a while since we had one, but hey, I'm back. Let's do this. So today I want to talk about, um, you know, quote unquote muscle building hormones in terms of physiological levels of hormones and, and how do they actually affect muscle building. You know, you'll see, uh, I got an email from a guy this is what kind of inspired this uh, this video log. He's like, look, I just had my testosterone tested, and I'm 400. And normal range is like 250 or 300 to 900, or like a thousand. And he's like, I'm just totally depressed. I can't build muscle because my testosterone's too low. <laughs> so, um, and, and and a lot of people think this way, and uh, that's that's just not true. It's not true. Um, and, and let me explain to you why. And almost all hormones are kind of like this. Um, and you also get this with, with a lot, you'll get a lot of testosterone boosters out there that will say, oh, you know, increases testosterone 50% or 60% or, or whatever it is. That's all fine and good, but I don't think anybody's ever stopped to question whether or not that actually means an increase in muscle mass. What? Huh? Lane, you got it. Oh, you're. Come on, Lane. Come on. Everybody knows more testosterone means more muscle. Come on. Um, well, though, no, that's not necessarily true. Um, and, and I'll explain it to you guys. So, you know, I think what, what a lot of people see is they see, you know, uh, people who take exogenous, uh, super physiological amounts of hormones and build a lot of muscle and they say oh well that's you know it's obviously anabolic and that you know I want to get my in the physiological range if I could take myself from let's say a 400 to an 800 uh, I would double you know I build double the muscle that that's not how it works that's not how it works hormones don't have that linear response okay and to best illustrate that let's just not even waste time let's break it out right now oh yeah the wipe off board. Okay, man, I always have trouble getting this thing centered. <laughs> so, what you have here on the y axis, or I'm sorry, on the x axis, is you have your concentration of hormones. Okay, and you see these little notches here and here, these represent the physiological range. Okay, and then on here, on the y axis, you have your, your muscle mass. Okay. So here's what actually happens. Okay, let, let's take testosterone and insulin are actually good examples. And they are kind of both the same in terms of the, the way they respond in terms of dosing. Okay, now let's say you have some, somebody who is deficient in testosterone. Okay, they will be, they will have less muscle mass. All right, if they are clinically deficient, they will absolutely have less muscle mass. Then if you restore that, if you restore that level to normal, they will gain muscle mass. Okay? And then, if you give a super physiological amount, you will get super physiological increase in muscle mass. Okay? Now, a lot of people have taken this and said, oh, well, look, this is a linear relationship. Okay? Just however much more testosterone or insulin you give, you get more muscle mass. Like I said, insulin's the same. If you're deficient in insulin and you restore that to a normal level by giving insulin, you know, let's say somebody's type 1 diabetic or something like that, you, you will restore that relationship. And then if you give super physiological amounts, you get more muscle mass. So it must just be a linear relationship. It's not linear. It's logarithmic. Okay? Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so yes, you'll get that restoration of muscle mass. Oh, if I could draw a straight line, it would be good. Put that in the blooper reel, right? Okay, so you get a restoration of muscle mass. But then in the physiological range, you don't really get an increase. Okay? Alright, it's kind of flat. Alright? Then once you get to the super physiological range, you once again get an increase. Okay? Like I said, logarithmic all right okay so that physiological range right here just taking yourself from 
400 to 800, uh, you know, in the physiological range, is it going to make a difference in muscle mass? And and to illustrate this, there was a researcher, and uh, I, I can't remember the name of the paper offhand. I'll I'll I'll, I'll find it. And I'll put the link in the description. Um, and what they did was they basically, in order to test this hypothesis, they abolished uh, testosterone production. And so basically everybody would start with kind of a zero almost. And then they added in testosterone uh, it, it with just with exogenous testosterone. And the reason they did it that way was because so they could hold everything very standard. Okay, and they could get really tight uh, standard deviations. And what they showed that was, yes, once you restore it, you get an increase in muscle mass, but, but th within that physiological range, just taking up more in the physiological range did not increase muscle mass further, okay? So you always have to look at something and say, what is, what is my actual outcome? You know, you've got a lot of supplements that promote, oh, increase GH by 100%, or increase testosterone by 30%, or increase insulin by this amount. And people will look at that and say, well, these, these hormones are anabolic. And so, just increasing them, if A equals B, B equals C, and thus, A equals C. It doesn't work that way, okay? You have to actually test it and see if what, what, if the actual outcome matches the mechanism, okay? It's fine to show these little increases in hormones, but does that actually lead to a physiological outcome? And the answer in the physiological range is no. And in the case of something like growth hormone, growth hormone actually really isn't anabolic to muscle tissue. <gasps> oh my god! No, it's not. If you look at the research, uh, even when they give super physiological doses, the increase in lean body mass you see from growth hormone, and I don't recommend taking uh, exogenous growth hormone, <laughs> just full disclaimer, but when they give it in studies in exogenous amounts, and super physiological amounts, the lean body mass increase you see is simply from water and connective tissue. Okay? Not, not actual myofibrillar tissue, okay? Now, I, I wrote an article a while back called Growth Hormone Great Expectations that essentially said this, and of course I upset the, uh, the balance in the guru universe because uh, people got very, very upset about that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, don't hate me, hate the data, okay? Um, again, these, these kind of physiological increases in hormones just don't do that much. And on that note, um, transient increases in hormones don't do that much, okay? A lot of people will look at, have you guys ever heard the uh, expression, well, squat, because if you squat, your arms will grow because you get a greater release of testosterone, growth hormone, all that kind of stuff. That's absolutely true in that you do get a better increase in, in those hormones when you, when you do big compound movements like squats and deadlifts, which does absolutely nothing for your arm growth, okay? There was even a study on it. They did that. They looked at it didn't increase arm growth any more than uh, they did it with, you know, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Stuart Phillips Lab, who once again, if you guys aren't following on Twitter, you need to follow M-A-C-K, at Mackinprof, M-A-C-K-I-N-P-R-O-F. Um, I believe it was his lab where they, they looked at uh, people who trained arms either without squatting or with squats, and there was no difference in arm size, okay? So just get that crap out of here. Um, muscle growth is an intrinsic process, okay? It happens on the cellular level. The muscle cell responds to autocrine, paracrine, and uh, kind of uh, stretch factors, metabolic byproduct accumulation, all that stuff is an intrinsic process. It's not something directed on a, uh, it's directed on a local level, okay? It's very specific, all right? So, Yes, again, if you give an exogenous dose of testosterone that's super physiological, yes, you will get an increase in muscle mass. Okay, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about, you know, small increases in the physiological range and also these transient increases. So for a while, the hypothesis was that you got an increase in testosterone uh, during training that lasted for about 60 minutes. And so that must be how, and growth hormone, uh, you got one of those two. So that must be how um, muscle was increasing from training. That, that's not true at all. Um, and actually cortisol also goes up when you train. And so let's examine that for a minute. 
Okay. People say don't train over 45 minutes to 60 minutes because your cortisol will go up. Oddly enough, the, the people that say that are also the people that recommend doing two hours of fasted cardio. Crickets? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I, yeah. But let's look at that for a second. Dr. Phillips, again, um, highly recommend keeping up with his work. Um, he looked at, okay, let's look at these different hormones that are produced during exercise. Growth hormone, testosterone, IGF-1, uh, and cortisol, okay? And let's see which ones have the greatest association with muscle mass, with, with increasing muscle mass during training. Guess which one had the greatest uh, association with increasing muscle mass? Cortisol! Hey! But Lane, cortisol is catabolic! Yes, cortisol is catabolic. So what does that say? Well, that says that transient increases in hormones mean absolutely nothing for muscle mass, okay? What you are getting with transient increases in hormone levels during exercise is not a growth response. You are getting a fuel substrate mobilization response, okay? Those hormones go up in order to, in order to mobilize more fuel, okay? That's it. That's why, all right? People say, well, that doesn't make any sense that cortisol will be most closely associated with, uh, with, with, with increases in muscle mass. Well, it actually does if you think about the way associations tend to run together. Remember we, remember we, we talked about uh, why correlation isn't causation. This is an absolutely beautiful example of that. Cortisol is catabolic, absolutely. So why does a transient increase in cortisol during a workout correspond most to increase in muscle mass? Well, because the workouts that are going to cause the most muscle increase are typically very stressful, they cause a lot of muscle damage, and thus because they are stressful, more, more cortisol, okay? There is an enormous difference between a transient increase in something and a long-term sustained elevation, okay? An enormous difference. And most people do not understand this concept, okay? Uh, I, again, I, I've had this, you know, people will say, uh, well, Lane, what about mTOR? You know, how leucine activates mTOR. I don't want to go, for those of you who are familiar, um, they say, well, well, you know, they block mTOR in order to treat cancer. So wouldn't, you know, eating a high-protein diet and taking leucine uh, be, be bad for cancer? No. Again, when you're talking about cancer, you are talking about something that is a perturbed system, okay? Something that causes a long-term sustained activation of mTOR. When you're talking about dosing protein or you're talking about dosing leucine, you're talking about something that is transient, that has a defined period of time that it runs and then it's done, okay? That is a huge difference from a long-term elevation. I'll give you one more example. Inflammation. Everybody talks about how we want to not have any inflammation, we don't want inflammatory, all that sort of stuff. What do you think happens when you, when you work out? You get an inflammatory response, okay? What, what, you get an inflammatory response. Also, your heart rate increases, your blood pressure increases, your free radical production increases when you exercise. And all those things when they are sustained, are unhealthy. Okay, absolutely. You see those in disease states. More inflammation, more redox, uh, higher heart rate, uh, resting heart rate, and uh, blood pressure. They, they, all of them go up. Okay? But again, a short-term, transient elevation of those things is not detrimental. In fact, it's a good thing. Okay? It's almost like exercise is a vaccine where it gives you a controlled dose of a stressor and allows your body to, to better respond to that stressor, okay? Again, I want you guys to take away from this two things. One, uh, transient increases in hormones or inflammation or, or any kind of thing in your body is a much different thing than a sustained elevation associated with some sort of perturbed or diseased state. Okay? That's one. Number two, 
Increases in physiological hormones are not the same thing as exogenous supplementation with a hormone to produce a super physiological level of that hormone, okay? There is a big difference, all right? An enormous difference. And so I don't want you guys to uh, get suckered into different training techniques or supplements or that sort of thing because you're chasing after increasing growth hormone by 100% or whatever it is. Or the whole, um, I know some people say, well, don't, don't eat uh, after your workout because, um, you know, growth hormone, will, it'll suppress growth hormone release after your workout. <laughs> what? Like, okay, well then why not just not eat at all? Because fasting increases growth hormone. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that uh, uh, I don't see very many, uh, uh, you know, didn't work out real well for Gandhi in terms of muscle mass, okay? <laughs> Fasting didn't work out real well for him, okay? So again, all right, a big difference between what you can produce physiologically and what happens in a short-term response, okay? So again, I hope this has cleared up some, some misconceptions, some myths regarding uh, quote-unquote anabolic hormones and um, giving you guys some more information that you can arm yourself with um, in terms of making the right decisions with your training and your nutrition, okay? Focus on, you know, the big pictures. Consuming the proper macronutrient intake, um, doing a you know properly periodized program with sufficient volume and intensity to produce results and uh, and consistency all right don't get hung up in uh, silly arguments about xy hormone and what happens when you pick your nose and scratch your butt that hormone goes up by 15 percent don't get caught up in that all right all right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I probably pissed a lot of people off, which uh, seems to me mean that that will be a successful video log. <laughs> so until next time, I will catch you guys later. Never quit.